uh, humans based upon features, places of origin, and who controlled the most wealth and power. Europeans, uh, Caucasians, were at the top, the Mongols, Asians, then Africans, Negroes, uh, at the Negroes at the bottom. It was Charles Darwin who essentially developed the concept of biological races, and in his book, The Origin of the Species, which came out in 1859. It was something that had happened over about a 300 year period of time. Okay. Racism is a tool of European white supremacy to maintain control. And you've heard Dr. Uh, Francis Craig Wilson, who wrote the ISIS papers, you've heard Dr. Nilly Fuller, who said, if you do not understand European white supremacy, what it is and how it works, everything else will totally confuse you. Okay, and that's absolutely correct. Everything. And this is one of the reasons why we're confused. This is one of the reasons why we think um, integration is the solution. Okay, integration is like the first step to disintegration. Disintegration means you separate and become totally consumed by the whole. You disappear. Now, some people may like to disappear. Okay, <laughs> some people may like to disappear, but that's that 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 is not a uh, that's not a viable solution. And actually, in this lecture right here, a lot of people don't know that Dr. John Henry Clark debated Dr. Cornell West back in 1993. Okay, this is dealing with integration versus panhandling. Because a lot of people don't know, Dr. Cornell West has been a clown for a long time. <laughs> I try to tell people that. Right, He's been right, a clown right. going back to yeah. the early, late 80s, early 90s. He and Henry Louis Gates Jr. Him, Dr. Henry Louis skipped the truth gates is what we call it. Uh, uh, they were calling Dr. Ben and Dr. Clark and the other African Center scholars. They call them pseudo-scholars pseudo and demagogues. Okay. All right. Uh, racism is a tool of European white supremacy to maintain control. The basis of racism is control of power. It occurs when, where one race of people control the majority of the wealth, power, resources, media, etc., and utilize this to injure, harm, marginalize, subordinate, etc., other races. Europeans in America control 87% of the wealth. African Americans control less than one half of 1% of the wealth in America. As a racial group, we don't control enough of anything to do anything to another race of people. We can be prejudiced, which means to uh, prejudge based upon stereotypes. We can be bigots. Uh, actually, if you, <laughs> I'm going to talk about Sanford's son. Fred Sanford was a black Archie Bunker. Okay, we can be bigots. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, and we and uh, also uh, we can be bigots, which means to have hatred to other races or ethnic groups or discriminate. Okay, we don't have the power to be racist. African Americans cannot and are not racist based upon the historical definition of racism. The problem occurs when so-called African American leaders, so-called, misuse the term racism to the point that no one really knows what it is. You can't fight what you don't understand. Whenever someone, European American, African American, says that something is racist or that you are racist, ask them to please define what is racism from a historical perspective. 99% of the time they can't do it. If you don't understand European white supremacy, what it is, how it works, everything else will totally confuse you. Okay? And a lot of this comes from uh, Poweronomics with Dr. Carl Anderson, pages six and seven. You can pass that around if you want to take a look at that. Now, if we look at quickly, if we look at the ISIS papers, okay, um, from Dr. Francis Press Wells, she gives a uh, also a working knowledge of uh, Racism, but especially from an African center point of view. Now, she's an MD and a psychiatrist. Okay, Dr. Francis Chris Wilson. This is a bad sister. I had the pleasure of interviewing her April 5th on my show. I'm going to have her back very soon. Okay, on page two in the introduction of the ISIS paper, she says, As a black behavioral scientist and practicing general and child psychiatrist, my current functional definition of racism, white supremacy, is as follows. The local and global power system structured and maintained by persons who classify themselves as white, whether consciously or subconsciously determined. This system consists of patterns of perception, logic, symbol formation, thought, speech, action, and emotional response as conducted simultaneously in all areas of people activity, i.e. economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. The ultimate purpose of the system is to prevent white genetic annihilation on Earth, a planet in which the overwhelming majority of people are classified as non-white. So we're talking about African people, brown, yellow, uh, Asians, uh, 
every other ethnicity. They're classified as non-white by white-skinned people. All of the non-white people are genetically dominant in terms of skin coloration compared to the genetically recessive white-skinned people. So racism was created as a, as a, as a mechanism, as a uh, tool to keep European white supremacy in place and to preserve white genetic survival. Because we have to understand that, um, we have to understand that Europeans saw what happened when the Moors went into Europe. They went to the Iberian Peninsula, they go into Crete in 1827, they went to 961, they go into France, you had a million of them settled in France, they go into various European countries, they go into Ireland, they go into Austria, they go into Germany. And these Moors, not all of them, but a significant amount, a lot of them, intermix with the Europeans there and produce mixed offspring. So they see what happens. They see if this continues, they're genetic, uh, they could be genetically annihilated. They could disappear. Right. right. So racism is created to keep that from happening. And along with that, when you study racism in this country, you study the history of this country, I talked about this in the previous lecture, uh, you'll find out about things like the Doctrine of Exclusion in 1638, the County of Maryland, which stated that black people should never be permitted to enjoy the fruits of white society. It's, it's later expanded to state that uh, black people should be a, a non-compensated, non-competitive managed workforce to express comfort building in white society. You'll have things like the slave codes put into effect. It's illegal, they, they'll, they'll make it illegal for Europeans and, and Africans, whether free or slave, to marry, to intermix, because they're trying to preserve genetic white survival, okay? So, I got, yeah, you can pass that around. Okay, just make sure I get all these back, please. Okay, because those articles are from my personal library and those books are from my personal library also, okay? All right, so this is a pretext that we have to deal with before we can just jump right into the, uh, jump right into the images. We have to understand the history uh, surrounding these images, okay? Now, um, Dr. Linda Jeffries is one of our great Grandmaster Scholar Warriors. Uh, Kalindi knows him. I've interviewed him a number of times on my show. Um, I need to remind some camera. He talks about the pyramid principle, okay? And um, when we take a break, I'll show this to you. I have a, a pyramid here, and the base of the pyramid is African history and culture. African history culture lays the foundation. Now, what is culture? Culture deals with your customs, your rituals, your spiritual systems. It deals with uh, your language, okay? It deals with your cosmology, understanding the universe as an orderly system. Uh, it deals with the mythology that a people tell. All these things are in, in culture. Culture is also related to history. History is nothing more than uh, a people's uh, psychology influenced by that culture with a time stamp on it because it's acted out in history. It's, it's behavior is acted out in history, events that take place, but they are fueled by the way people think, okay? So this is African history and culture. How many people are familiar with the uh, process of manifestation? It's, uh, T. Hart Ecker talks about it in his book, uh, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. Anybody uh, read that book, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind? T. Hart Ecker? It's 409. Okay, I don't want you to be late, brother. <laughs> All right, okay. The way this goes, if you want to, uh, uh, Secrets of the Man and Mind is an excellent book. It's not a get rich quick book or anything like that. But if you want to increase your net worth, if you want to have net worth, if you want to become a millionaire, it's an excellent book to read. The process of manifestation goes like this Your thoughts create feelings, your feelings create actions and behaviors, your actions and behaviors create results. Okay? <laughs> Your thoughts create feelings. Your feelings, your feelings create actions and behaviors. Your actions and behaviors create results. So when you control the way people think, you can ultimately control their end result. You control their behaviors, you can control the results that they get, and you can influence and predict the results that they get also. Okay? Now, what, what influences the way that you think? The way that you think is influenced by what you read, see, and hear. Everything you read, see, and hear. So when you control that, the circumference of people's uh, awareness, when you keep certain information from them like this, 
that we were sailing 130,000 years ago to Crete, you keep that information from them like that. When you, when you make them think that their origin in this country starts out as slaves in 1619, which is far from, which is far from the truth, okay? Then you can control the, their actions, all right? So that they think that they're guests in this country as opposed to the original residents, the architects here, okay? All right, so now the two sides of the pyramid, one side is economic empowerment, okay? Once you lay the foundation, now you can deal with economic empowerment, the other side is political empowerment. Economic empowerment deals with controlling the economics in your own community, on the land in your community, on the businesses, circulating your dollars, and controlling who comes in your community also. Not just letting anybody come in, set up dirty stores, sell rotten meat, things like that, okay? But if you don't respect who you are, Okay, if you think you're just an N-word, if you don't know your history, you let anybody treat you anyway. Okay? If, you, if, you, if your goal in life is to be a clone of Nicki Minaj, <laughs> you, let, you let anybody treat you any kind of way. All right? Now, next week, now, the other side of the pyramid, we have political empowerment. Contrary to popular belief, political empowerment is not voting. That's only a small portion of it. Because the wealthy don't vote, and they don't care who gets in office, because they're going to financially support both sides. So no matter who loses, they win. Okay? So it deals with political empowerment. It deals with controlling the politics in your own community, holding the, holding the uh, politicians accountable in your community also. Now quickly, quick detour. If you can't control what goes down in the city council, how are you going to control what happens in 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue? That's just a, that's just a question I like to ask people. All right? And, and, and also, you know, no offense to uh, uh, Fannie Lou Hamer and, and other people who fought for the right to vote and also died for the right to vote. Mega Everett was shot uh, <laughs> June 11, 1963. Uh, he died from that gun shot wound. But the sooner we realize that we don't pick the president, the better off we'll be. Okay? The Electoral College chooses the president. Right. And it's already predicted, it's already predetermined before he even gets to Electoral College, who's going to win. All right, they already know this. I mean, this is more rigged than wrestling. Seriously. They already, they, they already know what's going to happen. All right. So. Okay. Detour. Detour. Go ahead, stop it. Go ahead, stop it. I'm going to get to this in just a second. Okay. And then I'll, I'll work this into the presentation. That's fine. Hold, hold your question to the end. But go ahead. I'll, I'll work right. this into the presentation. Chris, Chris, Chris.